So. Uh, we were talking about good and wrong, good and bad, right and wrong about children, and I was watching this well-known t- talk TV talk show, and I heard this disturbing story of a father um, who was really badly t- treating children. He was he was just a pathological uh, problem to himself. He was just a psychopath, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he. Uh, he made an excuse to um, uh, get rid of the mother for a few hours, and when the mother came back, the biological father had kidnapped the children and took them away. And this was like many, many, many years ago, and they disappeared off, off the face of the earth. They tried everything. She tried everything to find them, and uh, now they're adults. I think they're in their 30s now. They were just really young when he took them, and I guess they went through hell on earth. So uh, there's many stories about pain, abuse, and uh, injustices with people. And so I had to strain my logical mind to the brink and back, trying to get give a straight, cut-to-the-core answer to this question of evil. Um, any human with or males and even animals for that, still able to know what feels good and what feels right and what feels wrong and what feels bad. So there's a reason for us all to have intuition, and there's a reason for us, both man-made and spiritual. So clearly there are some things done that do not appear to serve or anything. So there are people conscious, right or wrong, they can do terrible things to others without remorse and refuse to take responsibility for their actions. And, and they're like rattlesnakes and mosquitoes. I, I have no idea what their purpose are. <laughs> um, especially mosquitoes um, I do not know the bigger picture I think that's part of it we just don't get the bigger picture of why things happen the way they do and uh, again we're talking about um, a level of consciousness a vibration that, that souls have as they travel through this world I think that has a lot to do with it but what do I know I just go from what I what I hear and, and uh, speak for my, my truth of what I see uh, as a lack of light in a lot of souls traveling this earth. And being that there's no um, death, uh, then they keep coming back, you know, until we get it right. Anyway, till I see it different. Yeah, That's how yeah. for me. I, I go along with you. Well, it's not surprising that I say that. I go along with you on a lot of stuff, but <laughs> the... Pardon me. Up to a point. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I can hear a butt coming. <laughs> no. No. No butts there. Um, no. The thing that I was <laughs> I started laughing at was you know, when you said uh, I don't know the purpose of a mosquito, and I'm going, yeah, that's something I say all the time. I get tired yeah. of fighting these mosquitoes down here, and I'm going, I don't know what the purpose of a mosquito is other than to suck the blood out of somebody else. <laughs> Go find somebody else to suck blood out of. Leave me alone. Matter of fact, leave it's mankind of the food chain alone. For something. Yeah. Are they part of the food chain? For something. Yeah, for somebody. I don't know why, but okay. I can understand almost every other insect and every other creature on this earth that I know about, but I can't understand the purpose of a mosquito. <laughs> but regardless of all of that, <laughs> the uh, I was watching a movie last night, actually. Uh, it was on YouTube. It's on YouTube. And it's a Chinese movie, very interesting. It's almost like a Stephen King movie. Uh, of course, I had to read my way through it because I don't know Chinese. And uh, <laughs> Sub- <laughs> English, subtitles, yeah, right? English subtitles. I had to read my way through it. But mm-hmm. it was a very interesting movie uh, about a girl who, you at the beginning, you're beginning to think, well, okay, she's the jealous type because she's. They show her as she's she kills her best friend, and she works at a mm-hmm. clinic where uh, the doctors specialize in plastic surgery. So she's the one who helps people figure out the reconstruction of their face and whatnot in their bodies that they really want. And uh, she sh- it shows her as being in love with one of the doctors there, young guy. And uh, later on in the movie, after she kills her friend for um, being sexually involved with her boyfriend, 
you see they take you through a point in the movie where she is imagining uh, it shows her that she's imagining it's like they take uh, closed circuit television snapshots and they throw it in there so it's like okay she imagined all this stuff so okay the girl's got psychological issues Mm-hmm. And as the more you go into it, the more you feel that the girl has gone crazy. Mm. And she thinks she hits the cop that's investigating her and so on and so forth. So she ends up going to the police department and because she calls and says, hey, I hit this guy. He's dead. Come find me. She falls asleep by her car waiting for the police to show up. Police show up and there goes nobody here. So mm. now it's taking another change. In result of it is is that <clears throat> she, the police department, and her doctor, the boss, the woman who actually owns this uh, plastic surgery clinic, start working with her. Nobody's ever arrested or anything along this line because they could never, the police could never find any evidence of anybody. But they're taking her hints that, okay, uh, you killed somebody, you killed your best friend, you buried her in your backyard. So they dug up the backyard and found nothing but a journal wrapped in a plastic bag so she started reading the journal and it was a journal from uh, her and her adopted father Hmm. the adopted father ended up being the guy that she thought was the police officer that was investigating the girl that she killed (laughs) Mm, the girl that she thought she killed was her younger self (laughs) oh okay and as the movie goes on, you find out that this girl, this woman actually, uh, was adopted by this guy because, <laughs> let's see if I can do this in short term, uh, her mother and father were married. He was a sailor on a merchant ship, okay, and the ship capsized and uh, he was the only survivor of the ship. When he finally was found on land and whatnot, he got up and he made a phone call to his wife, and his wife told him to just change his name and just go on because she's got an insurance settlement from the uh, from the insurance company. So if he shows up, she'll have to pay the money back. So he agrees to do with it so that he, you know, his wife and daughter could have the money. So he's working all over the country and under assumed names and all this kind of stuff. So he misses his wife and child, so he decides, "Ah, I'm going to go drop in and visit him. He drops in. She's already taken the insurance money and bought a small grocery store. So she's at least invested it and made some money or making some money. She gets there and finds out that she's making out with the guy who started out to be her uh, uh, attorney to help her get the money. So she's Mm. having an illicit affair with him. Now, in the process of all this, the little girl, who turned out to be the adult woman in this film, uh, sees her making out, and then somebody comes in and kills her mother. Mm. She finds out later on, from when she finds her father her real father, that he was the one who came in and found her mother making out with this attorney, and he killed his wife. (laughs) Mm. Complicated, isn't it? Yeah, I'm even trying to remember how it all happened. But anyway, he killed his wife and disappeared because it was a rainy night and you know it was really hard to pick up any fingerprints, whatever the case may be. And the guy who adopted the girl was the attorney. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) But he actually very much loved both of them. But, you know, it was the mother who caused it and says, look, I want the money, so you stay away and I'll have the money. And, of course, being a young woman, she wanted love and affection. So, you know, the attorney happened to be the guy that got the love and affection. So... When I guess when the mother was found dead, he adopted the child, and he raised her from there. So now she, in the, her adult years, is now going through all of this because she saw, forgot, blocked it out, 
and she came back into reality and the guy that she was really in love with was her adopted father's son so at the end of the movie they actually get together and you know mm -hmm. that was the end mm -hmm. of the movie so i guess everything went well so but it was a very interesting movie how all that happened it sounds an awful lot like one of one of my students taking this course that that's doing the trans therapy mm -hmm. she come home from school one day they live in a small town north of me where we live and um she was only 17 she and her boyfriend come to the and the front door was open it's usually not they usually come in um and it's usually locked but it was open and um they got inside and she found her her uh, parents both dead on the floor Oy. yeah uh what a shock i mean there apparently it was a murder uh suicide Oy. so yeah what a way to leave people eh? they don't think it through Definitely. So that was something that we had to kind of diffuse for her so she could, uh, you know, forget that and let it go. But it uh, it's, it's certainly a lot better for her now than it used to be. Yeah. So as we continue this recording, so let's see. We're, we, we went through a lot of psychological issues here, so uh, we only have about 10 minutes to go with this recording um, I don't know you're talking about good bad evil you're talking about uh, the well, thing that most people don't understand is that yes you said it earlier we're not being given every bit of information that there is about this world and in other words we haven't been given the position of being the creator himself we can be co-creators with him. We have the ability to do a lot of things, but we still have our limitations. So we don't understand why all these things happen. Uh, as we both were commenting, we don't understand what a mosquito was created for, let alone a lot of other things. And why do we go through experiences? We don't know that either. So, Well, I did ask Spirit this question, mm -hmm. and I said, so I asked again, what, what is evil, and why is there evil? So this is what Spirit said to me. You have given the meaning, mm -hmm. and you associate it with the dark, the bad, the wrong. There are people without feelings or conscience, but in your world, for the same reason there is much contrast, rich and poor, hot, cold, black, white, Darkness is the absence of light, and light is the I am of me. Darkness is for contrast, for drama, for life lessons, for growth, for learning, love, and forgiveness. You may not know with exact truth what is good and bad, right or wrong, but you know when you feel bad or good. You intuitively understand in your core when something feels wrong or right. That's your intuition click, clicking in. <clears throat> you know the exact moment you become uncomfortable. Awareness means paying attention to your comfort zone. If you do something to hurt another, <coughs> my law is always in effect. I have indisputable laws of cause and effect, of act and consequences. My laws do not judge right or wrong, good or bad. They simply respond to vibrations, and the feelings associated with vibrations vary from person to person. Like, for example, how hot is hot for you and how cold is cold for you? There is no mark on the thermometer that tells this. This is where I got that idea. Anyway, the energy of thoughts, words, and then deeds create the effect of attracting like a magnet or repelling. This then puts in motion what will come back to you like a boomerang. Your cho choices as a, at a soul level create your reality, and as you go through your life, are based on vibration of your thoughts, words, and deeds, all based on your free gift of choice and on whether they have raised you up or depleted you. In the same way, the thoughts you think or words you use bring you what you align with. It becomes a necessity to accept responsibility for what you will attract. You do so by your thoughts, you th the thoughts you think, the words you speak, and the deeds you do. You can call it karma, but in essence it is a vibration or frequencies you yourself create. Each soul has a frequency much like invisible radio waves. <coughs> Nothing can befall you when your frequency is aligned with me. The closer you are to me in complete trust, 
The more you use my words, my thoughts, the higher your frequency. The vibration is natural. It is automatically sent out continually and returns in a circle as you create it. Forgiveness is a part of the vibration you hold. It is an understanding and an allowing that you do for yourself. Forgiveness is the beginning of happiness because it lightens the dark thought. I have no special, I have no comparison. I have no judgments of you. I cannot judge your frequency. It is light. I am light. To judge you would mean I would have to judge myself. Some people allow light in, their, in than others. Some block it by their fear. Blocking forgiveness would mean you would be blocking the happiness that love can bring you. Growth and understanding helps you to awaken and allow more light in. Light is love. It is impossible to know what love is except to say there are blocks to love's presence put in place by souls who do not understand who they really are. Understanding is a gift. To whom much is given, much is required. It becomes your Our mission, then, to spread the light to all those who are in darkness of illusions and disillusionment. Love them, for they know not what they do. Lastly, there is no death. You are eternal. You are here to learn and grow as a soul. This may take you into dark places until you learn to co-create with the universe and oneness. That's it. I love you, it says. (laughs) (laughs) I have some questions on there, and it's not for me. It's for people who are listening here uh you made two statements and if i can remember both of them i will do both uh, i will do them separately not running both questions at the same time but you says i do not judge Mm -hmm. and how do you fit that in with um well we both have a somewhat of a christian background so how do you fit that in with the quote unquote uh, I don't like using it but it's the typical uh, expression the Judeo Christian or the Jewish Christian way of thinking about God as being the judgment well that's because they think outside themselves <coughs> they think that uh, God is separate from them and it's um, a being out in the universe called heaven and when you think separate uh, and that you're not a part of the whole and oneness you think you have to judge. So how do you judge based on your rights and wrongs and somebody else's rights and wrongs all being different, depending on what area you're living in, what part of the world you live in, your rights and wrongs are different. So you cannot judge based on that. What is a judgment? And if you're one with the creator and you're just peeling the onion, if you will, to get to the core of who you really are, then you're you're one with the the creator god you're one part of it so people say oh you think you're god then i said no i'm not the creator god god is the ocean and i'm a drop in it but the drop is as pure as the ocean is so you cannot judge yourself that way you're a, a child of god learning the ropes if you will learning how to walk and talk and finally find who you are really are and when you find out who you really are you stop judging other people, and you stop you stop judging yourself. You start to. It says in in the scriptures, "Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might, and with all thy soul, and love your neighbor as yourself." <coughs> well, how can you do that unless you love yourself first with all your soul, with all your might? If you're one with God, that's how you should do it, because then and only then could you love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Actually, I well, the second question has already been answered in what you said, so I don't even ask me what the question was. But I, I'm going to put in my own little words to say the same thing that you did, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with you 100%, and there was never a point of uh, dispute in there. It's um, From my point of view, just to elaborate on what you just said was, uh, you have to love yourself, and I've said this many times in my previous shows, you have to love yourself first. You can't give what you don't have. You cannot give out to somebody. If somebody comes up to you and says, can I have $10? And you go, well, I only have 5 Well, how are you going to give what you don't have? I, and I, I, I owe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's 5 I'll owe you that when I get it. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Sorry. <laughs> the, the other part of that is that 
Yes, uh, if you understand that if God exists and you agree that God is a creator, then without God we don't exist. So we are connected with God, uh, with our source, with our creator. Because if the creator doesn't exist, we don't exist. And if he's existing, so do we. Mm -hmm. So we are connected. And uh, if you understand that to love ourselves is to love our source. Yeah. So how can you say I love source but I hate myself? Yes, it's one of the same. <laughs> yeah. The minute you become fearful is you have forgotten who you are. You've forgotten you have a source. Uh, and you're afraid that you're going this pathway you're on your own. You're all by yourself. And um, people get really afraid when they think about <coughs> I'm alone. How, what do I do? And you yeah. don't have anyone to look to. You don't have anything to ask and that's when you find the source is there for you yes well i want to thank everybody for attending this little video short as we're calling it video because it's on youtube but yeah. at any rate uh thank you pat for being here part of this group uh for part of this first session and uh we look forward to hearing again from you in the near future it's no limitations on how many times you want to come here so okay anyway Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Pat, once again. And okay. we'll catch everybody again in the near future. Okay, thanks, Kirk. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye-bye.